Okay, let's implement it. So uh, I wanted to display here for you the three different acceleration axes, the acceleration X, Y, and Z, and I'm displaying a slice from index 400 to 460 in blue, green, and red. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this, well, you can try it because it's fun, um, but the reason I'm showing you this is to show you that uh, the peak values are occurring kind of all over the place depending on which axis you're looking at. And that makes sense because uh, when the phone's in my pocket, it's rotating. There isn't a consistent direction that I'm moving it as my leg accelerates and decelerates. So the first step was figuring out the vector sum of these three different axes. Let's create... Uh, Let's create a place to do that up here. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a cell below um, because I want to define a function that will give me my vector sum first. So I'm going to define uh, net acceleration and I'm going to give it an x, y, and a z. Um, and I'm assuming those are individual floats. And I'm going to return the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So I can do a square root by raising to the power of 0 0.5, and then x squared is like this, and then y squared I can raise to the power of 2, z squared similarly. So that's going to that's gonna give me my vector sum. And now down here where I'm creating lists for all of my data, I'm going to create a net, uh, let's keep the naming consistent, a net, uh, an acceleration net. Um, and that's going to be a list comprehension where I run my function net acceleration on what? Uh, I guess let's do acceleration x index i, acceleration y index i, acceleration z index i for i in range uh, going up to the length of acceleration x. So in other words, I'm looping through all of the indices in this list, um, and I'm getting the corresponding values for x, y, and z. Those are the inputs to my function. And then it's going to output a list. Well, e each of the outputs is going to get added to this list of the net accelerations. Great. So now let's go ahead and plot just the net. Uh, let's plot, plot the net compared to just x for a minute. So net, and that'll be in, let's plot it in black. So it looks like it actually matches x pretty closely, but it seems like there's a peak here which is missing entirely in x. Some of the peak locations are a little bit different. So you can compare these to the other axes if you want, but for now let's move on. I said that I wanted only to count a peak if it was a peak, but also if it's above um, a threshold. So if data i is above threshold, then I want to count it as a peak. So the question is, what am I going to set this threshold to be? I think I want the threshold to be in units of standard deviations above the mean. Um, I'm going to set it as a parameter here uh, with a default value of two standard deviations above the mean. Um, but in that case, I don't actually want to see if my value is above the threshold. I want to see if the difference between my value and the mean is above the threshold. So let's say, whoops. So let's find the absolute value of data, well, yeah, I guess that makes sense. So let's find the absolute value of data minus mean. Um, we'll have to calculate what the mean is, obviously. And this, the units of this are going to be in the same units that you're measuring acceleration in, which is g-forces. Uh, but my threshold here, I said, was in units of standard deviations. So I also have to multiply this by the size of my standard deviation, which is something else I'll have to calculate. So in order to, uh, in order to complete this if statement now, I need to find what's the mean and the standard deviation of my data. So uh, we could pass those in, um, but I feel OK with just calculating them here. So let's calculate them here. So for the mean, um, I can just find the sum of my data. 
and I'll divide that by the length of my data. And that's the mean. For standard deviation, um, this is the equation that you would typically see in a, in a textbook. Um, described as an algorithm, what you're doing here is you're looping over all of your data. Each of these x sub i's is a data point. And for each data point, you're finding the square of its difference from the mean. This symbol uh, represents the mean. So we're, find, we're, so we're adding up all of the squares of the differences between our data points and the mean. And then once we've added all those up, we're going to divide by one less than the total number of data points. And then we're going to take the square root of the whole thing. So you can actually do this with one list comprehension. I'm going to define, what did I call it? Standard deviation. Um, so starting from the inside, I wanted to find the sum of something. What was it? The sum of the square of the differences between each data point and the mean. So let's make a list using a data uh, using a list comprehension, where I'm going to find the difference between some data point value and the mean. Um, only I'm going to square it, and I'm going to do that for each value in my original data, like that. So now that I found that sum of the square of all of the differences. Um, I want to divide it by one less than the length of the data. So here I've got length of data minus one. And then I want to take the square root of the entire thing. So I'll wrap that all in parentheses and have the square root. Okay, so let's run it. Is this everything I want? I think so. All right, and so now we can apply it and plot. Oh, I need to fix my indices. Uh, you can see up here my graph is sl a slice from 400 to 460, but down here I was getting peaks from 400 to 600. Um, so let's actually, uh, yeah, let's keep it the smaller slice, 460. So let's rerun, rerun. Well, let's rerun from the top so that we reset our graph. So I'm gonna run starting from here, 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 okay. There we go. So uh, the net accelerations were in black, <clears throat> but now I'm seeing that I appear to have found peaks in the blue data, which is, as you can see, the X accelerometer data. Um, and the reason why is here when I'm running get peaks, I'm running it on acceleration X. So I'm going to run it on acceleration net instead. All right, so if I run it and then plot, uh, so now you see it's found two. So it seems like it's missing steps here, 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 here. Um, so it seems like maybe two standard deviations above the mean is uh, too large. So I'm going to maybe look at 1.5, see what that looks like, plot it again. And now you see I'm getting a couple more. So you can experiment a little bit and the file names themselves have the correct answer for the total number of steps. So you can decide what you think is a reasonable threshold. That's it for the moment. Um, the algorithm is still imperfect. And I think if you explore uh, the data a little bit, you'll hopefully see why, but that will be for next week.